Hey you, fellow architect of your own digital domain. You've got that home lab humming, right? Yeah. Maybe it's a Proxmox powerhouse juggling VMs, orchestrating containers with Docker. You might even be in that uh, that sweet spot we hear about. The Raspberry Pi setup. Exactly. Yeah. Pi doing the heavy lifting on an NVMe external USB for backups. Maybe Open Media Vault serving media. Docker making things easy. It's the dream. Yeah. It is the self-hosting dream. But here's a question, and it keeps coming up. With all that cool tech, okay. are you really seeing what's going on inside? Or are you kind of flying blind, yeah. as some folks put it? Yeah. Like, what about those CPU spikes? Mm -hmm. Or when a VM just decides to reboot and container logs? Don't get me started. Are you actually in control? That's really the core of it, isn't it? That's what all we're right. diving into today. You've built this thing meticulously. Yep. It's probably running important stuff for you. But if you don't have that clear, real-time view, well, you're kind of just hoping for the best. Right. So this deep dive, it's really focused on that visibility question. We've looked at what loads of home labbers are doing, people who've, uh, as one source said, tested pretty much everything for monitoring Proxmox. Everything. So the mission is to give you a practical roadmap, get you that total awareness of what your system's really up to. Exactly. Imagine finally knowing why things slow down or getting that warning before a disk fails. Yeah, actually understanding why that container keeps restarting at 3 a.m. Oh, that one. So where do you even start to get this insight? Lots of people, their first thought is um, the usual suspects, right? Prometheus, Grafana, Loki. Often stuck right inside their main Docker VM. Right there. And look, it makes sense as a first step. Prometheus is great for metrics, you know, the numbers. The performance data. Grafana turns that into those lovely dashboards we all crave. And Loki handles the logs, the text stuff. Makes searching easier. Totally. We even saw this example of someone using Alloy, which is kind of like a newer way to do Prometheus-style exporting on their Proxmox nodes and VMs. Uh, all feeding into Grafana with Slack alerts popping up if something goes wrong. Looks neat. Sounds pretty solid, doesn't it? Data, graphs, alerts. But, uh, oh, the, the sources quickly point out a big weakness here, a sort of house of cards. What's the big risk with putting it all in that Docker VM? Well, the key thing is you got to monitor the monitor itself, right? Yeah. If your whole observability stack, Prometheus, Grafana, Loki, the works, uh -huh. if it lives inside the very VM it's supposed to be watching, well, you've created a single point of failure. Ah, uh, okay. Makes sense. If that VM tanks config error, runs out of memory, whatever, you don't just lose the services in it, you lose your eyes, you can't see why it failed. Ouch. As one source put it quite bluntly, all your logs, metrics, and dashboards vanish. Now for a pure hobby setup, maybe okay. Maybe. But if you rely on that home lab, that's a big risk. Okay, so keeping it all on the Docker VM is like mm -hmm. trying to use your dying phone's flashlight to see during a blackout. Not ideal. Uh -huh. Yeah, pretty uh -huh. much. So what's the smarter move? What's the home lab hive mind settling on? Seems like it's this idea of a dedicated LXC monitoring container. Exactly. That's the step towards better resilience. The idea is simple. Spin up a lightweight, unprivileged LXC container just for your monitoring tools. Just for monitoring. Yeah, minimum Prometheus and Grafana probably. And the crucial bit, you bind mount persistent storage into it from your ZFS data set or whatever you use. Explain bind mount quickly. Sure. Think of it like a direct tunnel, a folder on your main Proxmox storage appears directly inside the container's file system. Gotcha. So the container is isolated, but its data, your metrics, your dashboards, live safely on the host storage. If the Docker VM hiccups, this monitoring container just keeps chugging along. Right, so the data's safe. Yeah. And it's not just about isolating the dashboard itself, is it? The community talks about this hybrid approach for actually getting the data. Why is that smarter? It's layered. It recognizes that different parts need different monitoring. You put these little lightweight exporter agents everywhere. Yeah. So on the Proxmox host itself, usually node exporter, that tells you about the physical machine, CPU, RAM, disk IO, network stuff, basic vitals. Right. Then for Proxmox specifically, there's PVE exporter that knows about Proxmox things, VM status, storage cool health, even SSL certificate expiry. Oh, handy. Yeah. And for Docker, you can use Kedvisor for detailed container resource use, or Docker now has its own built-in Prometheus endpoint, which is pretty neat. And logs. Logs. Well, Promtail was common, but Alloy is definitely gaining ground. It's kind of merging metrics and logs collection, potentially simplifying things. Okay, so Alloy is the one to watch there. Yeah. So the big benefit is even if my main application VM, the Docker one, goes completely haywire. Yep. 
This separate LXC container is still running, still showing me what the Procmox host itself is doing. Yeah. That seems super valuable for figuring out what went wrong. Precisely. It's like the doctor checking vital signs, even if the patient isn't responding. You might lose the super granular stuff from inside the failed VM for a bit. But you keep that broader context of the host's health. Invaluable for troubleshooting. Plus, big win. The community shares ready-to-use Grafana dashboards for this stuff. Get you started way faster. Nice. Okay, so that's the Prometheus Grafana world, often in an LXC. Mm. But the sources kept bringing up Zabbix. Called it a long-time heavyweight. Sounds potentially complicated. It has that rep, yeah. Enterprise-grade, feature-packed. But the feedback was more like simpler than you think. What's the deal? Why Zabbix for a home lab? Well, it seems the community's found it pretty accessible lately, especially with some helper scripts and better docs. You typically set it up in its own LXC Container 2 server and web front end. Okay. There's apparently even a one-command community script that makes that setup way easier. Really? Yeah. Then you installed a Zabbix Agent 2. That's the collector on your Proxmox host, your Docker VM, other machines. And the Proxmox integration sounds really tight. Something about official API templates. That's a huge plus. These templates let Zabbix talk directly to the Proxmox API. It pulls loads of node info, CPU, memory, network, storage health basically automatically, less manual setup. Wow. We saw one enthusiast just raving about having full control. They were even using Zabbix agents to run scripts inside their Docker VM to automatically restart failing apps. Well, okay, so it's not just watching, it's doing. Potentially, yeah. All managed centrally from Zabbix. And it's interesting, like you said, it's kind of its own thing. It doesn't need Prometheus or Grafana. Right, self-contained. Exactly. It does its own data collection, has its own alerting, its own visualization, though you can hook it up to Grafana if you really love those dashboards. Oh. But yeah, it's modularity, the smart alerts, that dedicated Proxmox integration. The source mentioned a specific Zabbix Proxmox page. For people wanting reliability, low fuss once set up, deep integration and automation. Zabbix might be the jackpot. Okay, interesting alternative. Now, beyond those two big ones, Prometheus Grafana and Zabbix, seems like home labbers are always kicking the tires on other tools. What else is popular? Give us the quick tour. Sure thing. Lots of experimentation. Uh, Checkmic gets mentioned a lot. All-in-one, supposedly quite lightweight, good Proxmox support built in. Okay. Net data known for those real-time flashy visuals. Very low resource use. Great for instant feedback. Right, seeing those graphs. Pulse's newer clean UI seems aimed squarely at self-hosters. Getting good buzz. Mm -hmm. Munin older, simpler, but very plug-in friendly. Good if you have really specific custom monitoring needs. Customizable. Then, surprise entry. Home Assistant. Wait, the smart home thing. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it has decent Proxmox integration. Can even, like, reboot a VM if its CPU usage goes too high or something. Really? Yeah, kind of blends home automation and basic monitoring. And uh, Libre NMS started network focused, but can monitor servers, apps via SNMP and stuff, full stack capable. Wow, okay. Almost too many choices. Yeah. But there was that one critical piece of advice, wasn't there? Applied no matter what tool you pick, keep it separate. Absolutely fundamental. The golden rule, really, learn the hard way by many. Hmm. Always keep monitoring off the box you're monitoring, unless it's purely a hobby. Like Simple. If the main hardware fails, disk dies, power supply pops, whatever, yeah. and your monitoring is on that hardware, wow. you lose everything at once. Logs, gone. Metrics, gone. Maybe even your local backups if they're on the same system. It's that triple knockout you really want to avoid. Makes total sense. Okay, so beyond the big monitoring stacks, the sources also shared some nifty Proxmox-specific tricks like command line stuff and GUI tweaks. Yeah, the really granular stuff. Super useful for quick checks or deep dives. Like mm -hmm. installing Ilma's sensors. Oh, sensors. Yeah, and enabling kernel modules like drive temp lets you see actual hardware temp, CPU, disks, and fan speeds right from the command line. And then tools like Iostat for disk activity, Zpool Iostat if you're on ZFS, and just the sensors command itself. Great for running in Teamux, that terminal splitter thing, just to keep an eye on things in real time. Like a quick dashboard in the terminal. Exactly. And if you prefer the web GUI, there are community projects like PVE mods that can actually inject some of those hardware stats right into the Proxmox interface. Oh, that's neat. So these are like your quick debug tools when the main dashboard isn't quite enough. Spot on. But what about taking that separation idea even further? True remote monitoring. Now you're talking maximum resilience. Run your main monitoring stack on totally separate hardware. Like a Raspberry Pi. Could be a Pi on your network, yeah. Or a tiny VM in the cloud. 
or just another old PC. The point is, it's not your main Proxmox box. I mean, even if Proxmox completely dies. You still get alerts. You still have some visibility from the outside. Tools like Uptime Kuma are great for this. It just pings your services from outside your network to see if they're up. Simple but effective. And notification services like Entify to push alerts straight to your phone adds that extra layer, that out-of-band safety net. Okay, so we've gone from everything in one VM, risky, to dedicated LXCs better, to maybe even fully remote monitoring for ultimate safety. Mm -hmm. Seems like, yeah, no single right answer, just trade-offs. It really is about trade-offs and what you prioritize, but the strong consensus, the wisdom from the community, it really points towards that hybrid setup. The LXC one? Yeah. Lightweight exporters on the Proxmox nodes, container metrics from Docker or VMs, all feeding into a centralized, isolated dashboard. Whether that isolation is an LXC or fully remote, that seems to hit the sweet spot for most people. Best balance of data and resilience. Exactly. Comprehensive data, but protected against those single points of failure. You keep seeing what's going on even when things get bumpy. Right. So let's circle back to that first question we asked. Mm -hmm. Are you flying blind in your home lab? Hopefully, after all this, you've got a clearer path forward. Whether you want those perfect dashboards or just want to fix problems faster or just, you know, sleep better knowing your stuff is watched. Mm -hmm. Getting monitoring right is key. It unlocks that control, that understanding. Absolutely. So here's the final thought for you listening. Considering all these strategies, all this community wisdom, what's the first metric you're now thinking you need to track more closely in your own lab? Yeah. What's that one thing? And what might digging into that tell you about your system's real health, its hidden potential, something to chew on.